All right, so we had this question come in, which is a great question about photography. Now, inside Church Marketing University, we talk a lot about the importance of reaching young. In fact, in our assessment of a few thousand churches, what we found is outside of keeping the main things the main things, uh, a church's leadership's ability to prioritize reaching young is the greatest indicator that they're going to be a growing church. And out of that flows this importance of churches consistently capturing and sharing great photography. And so we talk a lot about this a lot. We talk about what photos you need. We outline the 10 photos you need. And then we had this question come in that was a great question that says, hey, Ryan, we totally get that. We're tracking with you. We want to get there. But we have a lot of lifers, people who have been around the church for a long time and not a whole lot of young families. So I want to give three quick tips if you are in that situation, okay? Uh, totally get that, totally understand it. Here are three ideas to help your church move forward to still capture photography uh, and focus younger and reaching younger. Number one, is don't be afraid to represent both now and the future. What you don't want to do with photography is paint a picture that is not consistent with who you currently are. So if you've got a lot of lifers, uh, that's that's great. What you don't want to do is in all your photography only show young people, only to have visitors show up and be like, okay, is this the right church? Like, I feel like I'm at a place here. Like, this is not what I saw on social media or on the website or in the Facebook ad, right? So you still need to be consistent with who you are, but you can still move forward to where you want to be in the future. And that's a great blend of multi-generation. So the second tip is this, is this next step is you need to get the young families that you do have into highly visible positions. So what I love to recommend for churches is, if you're going to have a couple greeters at, at your doors, let's say, you need to have a lifer and you need to have a young person. Could be a student, could be uh, a young married couple, right? And now you need to have both generations represented in that highly visible pos position. Same thing with like an information desk or on stage or in your worship team or, or whoever's greeting or speaking. Or, like you need to think through how do we get younger people in highly visible spots that would, again, it's going to be good for new people coming, for younger people coming. They're going to see people like them that they connect with. Um, and it's also going to be great for your photography to have opportunities to capture both generations in action building the local church. Uh, now, we had the almost the exact opposite problem at Summit Park Church when we started. We were a whole bunch of young families that had moved up from Springfield to Kansas City. And when we started, we didn't have the life so what we had to do was run this exact same game plan, but in reverse. So the, the when we started to have um, people that were just a little bit older, we would greet them like crazy. And then we would personally connect with them and cast the vision of like, hey, we want to be a multi-generational church. And you may look around and you may not see people that represent your generation. Would you help us lead the way so we are a healthy multi-generational church? Would you lead a small group? Would you be um, you know, a visitor or a greeter? So when visitors come in, they can immediately connect. Yes, there's going to be young families, but they're like, oh, hey, I, uh, you know, they can connect with somebody in their same life stage. And guess what? They lead a small group. So the, the moment we were able to cast that vision and get um, some key couples to go with us and represent that generation, be at highly visible spots, we started to gain traction and get the uh, lifer generation, as this question uh, pointed out. So we had to run the exact same game plan, but only in reverse. And, and number three would be um, up close, kind of fun, candid shots are going to be your friend. So when you can have those younger uh, people at highly visible positions, um, then be sure you're capturing up close shots. So if you have a young person greeting, right, you can get the camera pretty close in. Uh, so maybe you're not seeing a whole lot. You're, you're focusing in on that greeter, that person singing on the worship team or speaking or greeting on the stage. Or, or serving in the kids ministry, I would try to focus in on a lot of up close uh, shots and maybe even lean towards more kind of candid shots that you would see a lot on like an Instagram platform. Uh, one of the first things we did at Summit Park Church before we even started is we got a whole bunch of young families and we went out into a, a park and shot a whole photo shoot of just 
people hanging out doing life together at a park and that served as a way to supplement some of the shots that we were using in our communications for launching the church so uh, you can stage some things you can have fun with it you can do up close shots if you're if you are able to get younger people like in visible positions you could uh, stage those uh, before service when the worship team is practicing um, you can get up close shots on the stage so if you just get creative with it and think man how do we capture a variety of generations that can also help you out. So those would be my three tips. Don't give up with a few kind of thoughts and a, a couple of these ideas. It can really help your church become a multi-generational church. Now you can reach out and connect with more younger people. And when those young families start coming, they've got people they can connect with and, and go on that relational journey to find and follow Jesus. All right, keep the questions coming and, and we'll see you in the next episode.